Well, in a four-way race, I think it looks very promising. I think if no one gets out of this race uh, to consolidate behind potentially Ted Cruz, uh, Donald Trump's going to go on to win big next Tuesday because he has his really devout group of supporters who are in that 35 to 40 percent range, and he's going to be able to win four-way races. Uh, and I just want to go back to something I said earlier. I, I, I just think that if you look at what Donald Trump did just there, that's one of the reasons why Hillary Clinton is, is going to rue the day that she has to take on Donald Trump if he becomes the nominee and she becomes the nominee because she's been dealing with Bernie Sanders, who really is playing in a sandbox. He's kind of a uh, beanbag. Uh, you're dealing with full contact uh, politics here with, with Donald Trump. And I think she's going to have to really pivot. Uh, he's going to he's going to come after her with the with the cronyism, the, the culture of corruption, the foundation, the emails. Her, her security problems, her State Department failures, the Russian reset, Benghazi, you name it. He says she's a flawed candidate. I don't care who our nominee is. She's a flawed candidate. And I think she's going to look back and, and wish she was running against somebody like Bernie Sanders a little longer. Hmm. Uh, let's go uh, back, uh, Rick. Let me ask you about Donald Trump, though. Uh, with these wins in Michigan and Mississippi now, uh, you know, if you're the rest of the field, obviously uh, there is concern, and especially if you're Marco Rubio and uh, John Kasich at the moment. Yeah, no, I think that uh, this field has not quite figured out how to be competitive. Last week, we heard all these crazy rumors about, well, you know, we're going to divide up and conquer and, uh, you know, split up and go to these various states. And then literally almost as soon as that rumor started, you saw Cruz go to Florida and open up 10 offices. Well, maybe he wasn't, didn't get the memo, you know, right. from the establishment on, like, playing well with others. Um, so, it's, it, look, they're running. They want to win. They're going to try and run out their campaigns and do the best job they can. I don't think this field will narrow until they either run out of money or just run out of support. I think Kasich is more likely to run out of money, and I think Rubio is more likely to run out of support. I think that leaves Cruz. How long they go prolonging this, you know, divided opposition to Trump is just at their own peril. It, 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 it makes it that much more likely that Donald Trump's going to be the nominee. And I think we're only a, a week away from that becoming just a, the reality that will set in. Uh, I know, Rick, you have conversations with uh, Republicans, uh, including Senator Lindsey Graham. I mean, what are people saying now about how it is that they move forward? Because you're right, there was a point in which there were all kinds of scenarios being thrown out. And very quickly, that all went away. Well, you know, Donald Trump spent a lot of time on Lindsey Graham tonight. <laughs> yes, we heard uh, that. And yes. uh, if he finished strong, he said, I'm sure he's a good guy, but, you know, spent... 15 minutes beating the crap out of yeah. him. And, uh, and that typical, right? Oh, he's not a bad guy, but you know, he's a liar and all these kind of things. He's got a real good uh, tactic. I think what is material here is Lindsey Graham saying nice things about Ted Cruz, right? These two guys have no love loss in the United States Senate. Most of the United States senators are not big fans of Ted Cruz. He's put him in difficult positions before with government shutdowns and things like that. And the fact that now you see this sort of Senate move, some of these members to actually back in Cruz, shows just how panicked they are about Donald Trump becoming the standard bearer of the Republican Party. Yeah, Steve, let me turn to you. How do you see this Republican field now, now that Donald Trump is in Michigan and Mississippi? I just don't see how it isn't uh, Trump versus Cruz moving forward. I know Kasich's trying to make a play for this after a decent showing here in Michigan, and I know he's convinced he's going to win Ohio. But after that, uh, other than winning maybe a couple of states here or there or doing well, he doesn't have uh, any really path to nomination in terms of delegates. So you're really looking at uh, Cruz and Trump. And again, as I said earlier, this is uh, almost the Republican establishment's nightmare. You got a guy in Donald Trump who they don't necessarily trust, uh, and you have a guy in Ted Cruz who they don't like at all. And so, uh, you know, it's interesting. Uh, to Rick's point, the fact that senators who I think uh, all but maybe about one or two Republican senators uh, outwardly dislike Ted Cruz are now considering maybe thinking about Ted Cruz, uh, it just goes to show you the sort of desperate sort of straits where the, the establishment Republicans are uh, in terms of who to back in this in this game here. Um, but, you know, I, again, 
who knows at this point? You get down to Trump and Cruz, and you know the conversation may change. Uh, the debates may become a different, uh, different dynamic without Rubio and Kasich in there down the road. Uh, and maybe people's minds change in the establishment, or maybe they just bow out completely and let Cruz and Trump just sort of fight, fight for what's left over. Uh, David Bossi, I'm going to turn to you for a big picture question. How do you see things playing out? You know, I, I think uh, what, what everybody is uh, really kind of coalescing around here this evening is uh, that Donald Trump's in a very good place. Uh, and I don't think anybody can figure out a way to beat him. Uh, some of the best people in the country are working at that. And, and, and this guy has turned traditional campaigning upside down. Uh, he's turning the map upside down. And that's one of the things that really frightens the Democrats, I think, is that he makes... Uh, places like Michigan, potentially like New York, like New Jersey, not so not much New York, but New Jersey and other places in the country, put them on the map. He really flips the table over when it comes to the traditional presidential campaign map. And I think that that's one of the things that he looks to, uh, you know, in the long run, if he becomes the nominee. And I, I just think... He, after this evening's and his very strong wins in, in Michigan and in, in Mississippi, I, I, I just think he's he's one step closer. And next Tuesday, if he wins both Ohio and Florida, he puts this thing away uh, for all intents and purposes uh, if he wins. I, I don't know that he will, but I, I think he's in, 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 a, in a very good spot. Ted Cruz, however, has one week to really make the case that he is the person, the man to stand up to Trump. And if you look at the numbers, there's a case to be made where Donald Trump can be beaten in a one-on-one -on -one race, that his, he has a high floor, but a ceiling that isn't quite at 50. And I think that Ted Cruz is going to implore the other candidates uh, and the establishment to say, if you guys really believe in stopping Donald Trump, you must get behind me. And I think that's really where we are tonight. We'll see how much it changes by morning. Yeah, likelihood of that <laughs> happening, though, David, realistically. The likelihood of the establishment coalescing around Ted Cruz really determines, is being determined by how much they really hate Donald Trump. Do they believe Donald Trump is a man that they can make deals with, that they can work with if he becomes president? If he is the nominee, how will he treat them in September and October when they need him to lead the top of the ticket? Uh, but if, if they want a more traditional candidate, even though he's not within the establishment, he is a traditional campaigner, Ted Cruz is is going to be somebody that they can turn to in the time of need and where he is a team player m more so than he's given credit for it, at least in his time in the Senate. You look at how he's won campaigns. He's brought people together in Texas. He won against the establishment. He, he crushed them. And I think that he can do that again if, he, if he's given the opportunity. Uh, so, David, I have to tell you, you're getting some strange looks over here <laughs> from my pe fellow panelists here. You, you know I thought what? he was that, doing that, great okay. until he said Ted Cruz was a great uniter. Hey, hey, you like, know what? Well, yeah. hey, 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 here's the thing. <laughs> Donald Trump says he's a great, uh, a great, uh, a, a guy who can bring people together as well. So I don't know about uh, all of this. All I know is, you know, I just, I, I just look at uh, Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump general election, and I just, I, I think it's going to be an, a very interesting race. Yeah, I mean, uh, do you want to say something, Jessica? I'm just wondering who's yeah. the more formidable candidate, Ted Cruz or Donald Trump? Donald Trump. Donald Trump is. I mean, Ted Cruz is so ideological, which I think is fundamentally why he is not a unifier. I mean, you're talking about a man who shut down the government and says he'd do it again. I mean, he was at the forefront of shut it down about Planned Parenthood this time when a majority of Republican voters, while they wanted to defund Planned Parenthood, they didn't want to shut down the government over it. I mean, this cost tons of money to the U.S. economy by doing this. You know, he doesn't play nice with others. Mm -hmm. And we have learned whether or not you like Barack Obama or not, this has been one of the criticisms of him, that he doesn't know how to play with others, that he never, you know, invited Mitch McConnell out for golf or whatever it is to talk about these things. And if you want to know someone who's not going to make friends, that's Ted Cruz. Donald Trump is extremely unpalatable to me. Um, but it, I think that actually he has more capacity to work with people, as we've seen. I mean, the, the guy was a Democrat for a really long time, so obviously he knows how to play with others. Um, I'm, I'm not endorsing either of these fellows, yeah. but...
Yeah, I asked the question. So, all right. Uh, we want to say thank you to David Bossie in Washington, President of Citizens United, former Chief Investigator for the U.S. House of Representatives. David, thank you so much for your opinions tonight. We appreciate it. Uh, thanks for having me.